Hello and welcome to Pre-Algebra Lesson 22. In this video we're going to learn about exponents with an integer base. So for our lesson objective, we want to learn how to perform operations with exponents that have an integer base. So before we get into the main content, let's just briefly review exponents. So recall that at this stage we're using exponents to conveniently notate repeated multiplication of the same number. So for example, something like 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 factors of 3, so I can write this as 3 to the 5th power. Right? The number that's being multiplied by itself gets written as the bigger number. This is known as the base. Okay, So that's 3 in this case. The smaller number in the top right hand corner, this 5, is the exponent. Okay, it's the exponent. And so it's telling me that I have five factors of three. Now, if we want to look at another example, let's say we had seven times seven times seven. The number that's being multiplied by itself is seven. So that's my base. That is my base. And then I have one, two, three factors of seven. So my exponent is a three. So at this point, it's very, very easy to work with exponents. We've only worked with a base that's positive. What we're going to think about today is what happens when we have a negative base. Well, when we're working with exponents, we need to be extra cautious when dealing with negative numbers. There's some notational issues that are going to come up, and we're going to explain that in this video. So when working with a negative number that is raised to a power, the base does not include the negative part unless we use parentheses. Okay, so let me read this again. It's very important that you understand this. When working with a negative number that is raised to a power, the base does not include the negative part unless we use parentheses. So let's think about this problem using an example. I want you to pretend that your teacher tells you, hey, what is negative 2 squared? So you have your pencil, your paper, and you have a calculator. And you start out by writing, negative 2 squared, just like that, no parentheses, and you go through and from your knowledge of exponents you say, okay, I have two factors of negative 2. So I have negative 2 times negative 2. Now you say, okay, negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Now you pull out your calculator and you verify. You say, okay, I'm going to type in negative 2. I'm going to use the to the key, right, the to the key, and then I'm going to put a 2 in, so it's negative 2 to the power of 2, and I'll just erase that real quick and write it like this. And your calculator spits out an answer that says negative 4. And so you're thinking, what gives? Why did my calculator say that this is negative 4, whereas I think the answer is positive 4? Well, I'm going to tell you it's a notational issue, and here's why. So let me kind of erase this. This is wrong, by the way. So I'll erase this and show you why. All right, if I have negative 2 squared written like that, really what I'm saying is I want the opposite, the opposite of 2 squared. So to make this clear, let me write this as negative 1 times 2 squared. And using our order of operations, we know that we would perform any exponent operation before we multiply. So essentially I would have negative 1 times the result of this. 2 squared is 2 times 2, that's 4. So now I have negative 1 times 4, and that's negative 4. So you can see where we got the wrong answer, right? We just didn't have the right notation. So to get the notation correct for what your teacher asked you for, if your teacher said, hey, what is negative 2 squared? Well, essentially, I would need to put parentheses around negative 2. The negative and the 2 need to be enclosed so that they are both part of the base. So this now is a negative 2, and I'm squaring that. So this would be equal to negative 2 times negative 2. And this is now equal to 4. And you can verify this. Go ahead and type this in this way with your calculator. Make sure to put parentheses around the negative 2, and you will see that you get an answer of 4. Now you might be saying, what if I did this trick up here where I'm multiplying by negative 1? Well, it still works out. Let's say I did negative 1 times 2, enclosed in a set of parentheses, and I squared it. Well, essentially what's going to happen is I'd have what? 
negative 1 times 2 multiplied by negative 1 times 2. And just to kind of simplify this, I just have multiplication involved. So I can just remove all those parentheses and just write this as negative 1 times 2 times negative 1 times 2. And commutative property tells me I can reorder this. So I'd have negative 1 times negative 1 times 2 times 2. So negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Then positive 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is now 4. So we can see that our mistake was just with the notation. right? That's all it is. So moving forward, the only thing we need to realize is that if I have a negative number that I'm working with, and I want to raise it to a power, I have to enclose that negative number inside of a set of parentheses. Now, there are some scenarios where you'll get the same result, although the notation is wrong. And let me show you one of those. So let's say you had something like negative 4 to the third power written like this. The negative 4 is not inside of a set of parentheses. So technically speaking, because of the notation, this is the opposite, the opposite or you could say the negative of four cubed. I could write this as negative one times four cubed. And of course, following my order of operations, I would do four cubed first. That's four times four, which is 16, times four again, which is 64. So this is negative one times 64, which is negative 64. Now, let's suppose that I enclosed this negative four inside of a set of parentheses. In the last situation we looked at, we went from negative to positive, right? We kind of corrected our mistake and we got a different answer. Will we still get a negative or will we get a positive here? Well, what you're going to find is that in this case, it will not change your answer. And then we're going to explain why that's the case. So let's say I enclose this inside of a set of parentheses. So now I have negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4. Well, I have three negatives involved in this problem. Three negatives is going to give me a negative. Three is an odd number. In other words, I have one pair here of negatives that gives me a positive, but then I have one left over, right? So I'm going to end up with a negative result. So I would have a negative 64 in this case also. Now, knowing that, I'm going to go through and read some rules that you just want to remember when you're working with exponents. When the base is negative and enclosed in parentheses, the result is positive if the exponent is even, right? Because I would have an even number of negative factors that gives me a positive result. The result is going to be negative if the exponent is odd, because I would have an odd number of negative factors that's gonna give me a negative result. And then the other scenario you need to be aware of is that when the base is negative and not enclosed in parentheses, the result is always negative, always negative. Doesn't matter what the exponent is because in that scenario, you're just saying, hey, I want the opposite of what you're doing over there. So for example, the opposite of four squared. Because this negative four is not inside of a set of parentheses, this will always be negative, right? This will always be negative. So in this case, it would just be the opposite or the negative of 4 squared, 4 squared is 16, so this would be negative 16. If I was to write this with negative 4 inside of a set of parentheses, now I would get positive 16. Because in this case, I have negative 4 times negative 4. Two negative factors gives me a positive result. So in this case, I'm thinking about, okay, well, my exponent is even. I'm going to get a positive result. Okay, let's use these rules and just do some practice. So we want to evaluate each. All right, so we have negative 3 inside of a set of parentheses, and it's squared. So this tells me that I have what? I have negative 3 times negative 3. So this is going to be positive 9. But again, what I can do is I can just look at, because this is inside of a set of parentheses, and my exponent is even, I know my answer is going to be positive, right? I have an even number of negative factors. In this case, it's two. And an even number of negative factors gives me a positive result. What about negative three raised to the fifth power? And notice how the negative three is enclosed inside of a set of parentheses. Well, I know the result is negative because I have an odd 
exponent there. Five is an odd number. And so I would have an odd number of negative factors. And you can just think about three to the fifth power now. You don't even need to think about the sign anymore. Three to the fifth power would be what? It'd be three times three, that's nine, times three again, that's 27, times three again, that's 81, times three one last time, which would be 243. So this would be negative 243. What about negative one to the 38th power? Well, 38 is an even number. So we know the answer is going to be positive. Now what's cool about the number one is, when you multiply it by something, the number is unchanged. If I multiply one by itself, it doesn't change. So one times one is one. It doesn't matter how many times I do that. If I go one times one times one times one times one times one, the answer is one. I could do this a million times, I still get one. So one to the 38th power, forget about the negative, one to the 38th power would just be one. The fact that we have a negative and it's enclosed inside of a set of parentheses tells me I just need to look at whether this exponent is even, which in this case it is, or odd. Since it's even, I know I'd have an even number of negative factors and an even number of negative factors gives me a positive, so I end up with positive one. What about negative one to the power of 71? Well, my negative one is enclosed inside of a set of parentheses, but my exponent is odd. So I would have an odd number of negative factors. Now that would give me a negative result. And I would just think about one to the 71st power is just one. So I'd end up with negative one as my answer. Okay, now we have negative 10 cubed, and this negative 10 is inside of a set of parentheses. So again, I'm looking at this exponent. This exponent is a three, that's an odd number, and so that tells me I'm gonna have a negative result. Once I know the sign, I can just think about, okay, well, what would 10 cubed be? What would 10 cubed be? Well, I taught you a trick for this. Basically, when you have 10 raised to a whole number that is larger than one, you just write down a one and follow it with the exponent number of zeros. So in this case, the exponent is a three. So I would write one, two, three zeros, and I would get a thousand. You can just drag that up there and attach that negative to it. And you would end up with negative 1000 as your answer. What about negative eight squared? But again, notice how there's no parentheses around negative eight. So I'm not looking at the exponent here. I don't care that this exponent is even. The result is going to be negative, right? Because I'm basically saying, hey, what's the opposite of eight squared? Eight squared is 64. When I take the opposite of it, I get negative 64, right? And let me kind of write this out so you get a little bit more practice seeing this. So this is essentially negative one times eight squared. So it's negative one times 64, which equals negative 64. Now what about negative eight squared, where the negative eight is enclosed inside of a set of parentheses? Well, now I'm looking at my exponent. I have a two there. Two is an even number, so I know my answer is going to be positive. And now I can just think about, well, what is eight squared? Okay, well, that's 64, and so my answer would just be 64. Okay, let's take a look at negative five cubed, where the negative five is enclosed inside of a set of parentheses. Well, in this case, my exponent is odd, so I'm gonna get a negative result, right? An odd number of negative factors gives me a negative. And now I just think about well, what is five cubed? Five cubed is five times five, that's 25, then times five again, that's 125. So my answer is negative 125. For the final problem, we look at negative five cubed where there's no parentheses around the negative five. Now, in this case, we also get a negative 125. And you might say, well, how come I got the same answer? Again, to explain this, in this case, I'm saying, hey, what's the opposite of five cubed? Five cubed is 125. The opposite of that is negative 125. In this case, whether the exponent is odd or even, it doesn't matter, you always get a negative. And looking at this scenario, where I have parentheses around negative five, I look at my exponent. If my exponent is odd, like it is in this case, I'm going to get a negative result. I would have had negative five times negative five times negative five, right? I have three negative factors. Three is an odd number, so I'm going to get a negative result. 